Hey everyone, this is Nick and it is time again for your weekly dose of Linux and open source news. This week we have Accent Colors being brought as a Linux standard through the XDG desktop portals. We have the release of the Linux kernel 6.5 with some nice performance improvements and a lot of details about what's gonna happen in 6.6 which is going to be a major performance improvement as well. And we also have some more details about GNOME 45 and even some stuff about GNOME 46. So let's get started right after I tell you about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and you probably have heard about them by now, but if you haven't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to build your own website, however complex or simple you want it to be. You can completely customize the website to look and feel and have the features that you want. You have a big selection of templates and then you can rearrange them by just dragging and dropping blocks into place. You can change the general colors, you can add new pages and you have a big library of modules like a complete online shop with online payment or a members only area, a video gallery. You can even pick your own domain name and book it from Squarespace and they even have a module to design your own logo. So if you need a website but you don't really know how to get started or you don't have the time or the technical skills, just head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So accent colors are now a standard on Linux being added to the XDG set. With the latest updates to the XDG desktop portal, accent colors are now available to every app that uses these portals, including Flatpak apps. The way this works is the system sets an RGB value for the accent color in a new key, and that key is made available to any app through the portals so they can now respect the system settings. If no value is set, the app will just use the default color for the toolkit it uses or the color the app developer has set. For now, it doesn't seem like any desktop environment supports this, but since the merge request and its inclusion in the portals was acknowledged by GNOME, Budgie, KDE, Cosmic, and even Elementary OS, I'm pretty sure we'll see all of this happening pretty soon. The new XDG desktop portal also adds a clipboard portal, so apps can read from the clipboard safely, with permissions, and there's also a new input capture portal for an app to capture the mouse or keyboard input, like in a VM or video game. And that's great news for accent colors. You will just be able to select one accent color, for example, in GNOME, and all your GNOME, KDE, Elementary, Cosmic, whatever else apps will follow the same accent color. It's still not the same theme, but at least it's much better desktop integration than trying to change that manually for each toolkit or desktop you use. Now the Linux kernel 6.5 was released this week, and it's a big update to the base of our operating systems. Ryzen CPUs on the Zen 2 architecture, so 3000 to 5000 series, and some Threadripper models should get better performance and better power efficiency thanks to the new P-State driver being turned on by default. For servers with a lot of CPUs, there's also the ability to initialize these in parallel, which can reduce the time this takes by a factor of 10. It shouldn't affect us regular desktop or laptop users though. For Intel users, 12th gen and upwards should also have better load balancing between performance cores and efficiency cores, which should improve power efficiency and performance. AMD FreeSync is now also supported by default by the kernel, and MIDI 2.0 and USB 4 v2 support has also started. Support for RISC-V is improved with ACPI and vector extensions, Wi-Fi 7 got some work as well, and NVIDIA Shield devices are now supported by the mainline kernel. On top of that, Xbox controllers are better supported, especially in the Rumble department. The X4 format got faster direct I.O., BetterFS got some performance improvements, and the NTFS driver also got some love. It is a very nice update that you should get soon if you don't run an LTS or super focused on stability distro. And personally, I should be able to take advantage of both the Ryzen improvements and the Intel 12th gen improvements, which should be cool. And for the kernel 6.6, we can also expect a lot of cool stuff. First, developers managed to clean up the sysctl space, reducing the space used by each array by 64 bytes, which means that not only the build time of the kernel will be reduced, 
but the RAM consumption of the kernel will also be lower. On top of that, we should get some nice improvements to I.O. performance, an improvement described by the developer as pretty juicy. And pretty juicy it does look indeed, from 4.5% faster speeds up to 37% faster. A new scheduler should make its way to the kernel as well, replacing the older CFS. It should bring back cluster scheduling for Intel hybrid CPU, so 12th gen and upwards, and the majority of workloads should be improved as well. But developers are also expecting some performance regressions, which they said they would fix as soon as they were identified. And 6.6 .6 should also introduce AMD Dynamic Boost, plus a manager for virtual addresses for GPUs, which should improve Vulkan support, and some more control over Intel graphics, that could yield up to 15% better performance. The kernel will also have additional protections against the illicit behaviors of the NVIDIA drivers, the NVIDIA proprietary drivers do some weird stuff to be able to use GPL-only symbols in their drivers, even though these are not provided under the GPL. And so the kernel will be raising additional protections against that. And as per 6.7, yes, we can already talk about that, we might see some better overclocking support for AMD GPUs. AMD is developing some new interfaces for overdrive, which will let people develop tools, graphical or otherwise, to overclock their GPUs. Although AMD doesn't provide their own GUI for that on Linux. These new interfaces will let users manipulate the fan curve, the target temperature and the acoustic threshold for fans. They will only target RDNA 3 graphics and later though, older GPUs won't benefit from that. It is very exciting stuff and I love all the performance work we've been seeing in the recent kernel versions. It's a really, really good time to be a Linux user. Now we have more details about changes coming to GNOME. First, in GNOME 45, Nautilus will lend a new look with a better looking sidebar. It will now use the entire window height instead of stopping right under the header bar and it gains a little title, Places. The various indicators for file transfers or archive extractions will also live in this sidebar now, instead of being sandwiched between other header bar buttons. Now, it does look better, but also you're not gaining any space in terms of height because the title occupies the same height as the header bar did, and you're also losing some space on the breadcrumbs bar or the path bar because it's now moved to the right of this sidebar. So in terms of navigating your file system, I'm not sure that's really an improvement. Next, the settings will receive some love. Not all changes for GNOME 45 though. Now what will land in GNOME 45 though, is the new Privacy Hub, which regroups a few options that were disseminated throughout various panels, like screen lock, location, file history, and the camera and mic permissions. In GNOME 46, the settings will land a new System Hub as well, and a new network and internet panel, which both should be big reworks of the current UI. It's cool stuff, at least if you like settings, which I do. Sometimes I just open the settings app just to look at what's available and see if I could change anything, just for fun. Now in KDE land, KRunner got some love in preparation for Plasma 6, with the ability to manually configure results to be displayed in the order you want. You will be able to reorder them in the settings so you always get what you usually look for first. This little tool also got some performance improvements and gained the option to start hybrid sleep if your system supports it. KWIN, the window manager slash compositor, should perform better as well and won't repaint layers of the screen that haven't changed, which should result in more power efficiency as well, and various parts of Plasma and the settings will also gain a little performance boost, opening a few hundreds of milliseconds faster. On top of that, the previews for HDR images viewed in apps that don't support HDR are now converted to sRGB, so they will not look weird anymore. And console now puts each process in its own C group when using system D, so you can find each process individually in the system monitor. There were also more than 100 bug fixes this week, including for a crash when switching global themes in Plasma. And I didn't think you could still add anything to KRunner because it's already pretty freaking awesome, but apparently I was wrong. And also it's good to see some more performance improvements coming to Plasma. It's gonna make Plasma 6 into a more interesting release. 
Okay, now in the My Country Sucks More and More Each Day series, France now has yet another internet censorship law called SREN, which is a way to regulate online content. This law would require DNS resolvers and web browsers to block websites directly if they are part of a government blacklist for any infringement they decided upon. According to experts, this is a very slippery slope that could have impacts on privacy and on freedom of expression. Any authoritarian government could abuse this to prevent French citizens from accessing certain pieces of information. And this would bypass most censorship evasion tools, as the browser would just plain refuse to display the website. Mozilla already said that this is a big problem, and I would expect other browsers to follow suit. In terms of privacy, it's also a problem, as browsers could be pushed to collect more user data to be able to block these websites. This bill is also being fast-tracked through an accelerated procedure, as the French government has regularly done recently, so discussions, amendments and analysis will be very limited. So basically, it's yet another nightmare censorship law with enormous potential for abuse, and I'm getting very tired of the way my country handles these issues recently, it's really awful. And let's finish this with the gaming news. First, as I reported last week, Roblox now supports Linux again through Wine. It was only doable through the beta channel last week, and now it's in the stable channel as well, so you can run it with Wine or with Vinegar, which is a wine wrapper for Roblox. Wine 8.15 was also released with support for the text print processor, which as its name implies, is here to convert print jobs into a format that can be sent to a printer. There were also more improvements to WoW 64, the emulator that lets 32-bit apps run under 64-bit windows, or in this case, 64-bit wine. 19 bugs were also fixed, including for Trackmania, Nations Forever, Chessbase 11, Forza Horizon 4, Colin McRae Rally 2, and more. The Steam Deck also got two new stable updates, version 3.4.9 and 3.4.10. The first one implemented a fix for the GPU drivers, specifically for Starfield. Pierre-Lou Griffet, one of the major developers for Proton and Valve, said that there was still an issue with the game, and so Valve released another update, 3.4.10, to SteamOS to fix that very issue. So basically, when Starfield officially releases out of early access, which people have access to if they paid for the game more or earlier, not sure, uh, when it officially releases, you can expect to play it on your Steam Deck. Whether the performance will be good enough, I don't know, but it should be a pretty cool experience nonetheless. And Wayland's support for Wine also progresses nicely, as the sixth part of that effort has now been submitted as a merge request for Wine. This part adds support for mouse events like cursor movement, the cursor entering or leaving the window, and updating the cursor image as it hovers over elements in a window, something that is generally pretty useful for video games. The code is under review and there are apparently some issues to fix, but this is a major step for Wine to not need X Wayland anymore. It is very nice to see this work progressing nicely. It's one major barrier that is going to be lifted, probably not before 2024 though. What you can get before 2024 though is one of our sponsors' devices. Tuxedo ships laptops and desktops that run with Linux out of the box. The hardware has been specifically picked to run Linux well. And if there are some compatibility issues, Tuxedo generally fixes stuff and pushes that upstream so everyone can benefit. They have a big range of devices that should cover every need and every price point, whether you're looking for a laptop, big or small, a NUC, a desktop tower for just office work, or for, I don't know, video editing, 3D modeling, they have it all. All the devices are very customizable, including the keyboard layout, the logo on the lid of the laptop, the components, and all the laptops are openable, repairable, and upgradable. So if you need a new device and you want to support Linux and you want to support Linux's development, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo PC. They are really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, there's always that dislike button and you can tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description below that you can click for LibraPay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube memberships, 
whatever, you know how this works. So, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!